and these are the headlines. The President of the Republic chaired on Sunday a meeting of the Council of Ministers devoted to presentations relating to the implementations of complementary development programs in Khanshla, Tisimsid, Jilfa and Tinduf provinces. 150 tons of vital food supplies are being to delivered to Gaza via Rafah border crossing, initiative of the Algerian Red Crescent with the support of the PNA. In Gaza, hospitals are surrounded and the refugees are forced to leave these safe facilities. Al Amal and Nasser and Shifa hospitals have been severely, severely targeted. And for more information, we have with us live Usama Nazel, a Palestinian journalist from Jenin. Moroccans are denouncing normalization ties with the Zionist entity. Student gathering has been savagely repressed by the Maksim regime. Details at the end. All right, welcome back. First of all, the President of the Republic, Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, the Minister of National Defense, Abdel Majid Tabun, chaired on Sunday a meeting of the Council of Ministers. The meeting was devoted to presentations relating to the monitoring of the implementation of complementary development programs in Khishla, Tisimsit, Jilfa, and Tinduf provinces. The progress report on the General Agricultural Census and the Electricity Connection Program for farms, industrial, and business zones were also tackled, in addition to the state of preparations for the 20 24 Olympic Games. Full statement of the presidency with Raniel Bahri. After the opening of the council by the president of the republic, then listening to the agenda and the presentation by the prime minister of the activity of the government over the last two weeks, the president of the republic gave the following instructions and guidelines. Regarding the report relating to the digitalization process, the High Commissioner in charge of this file presented his periodic report which noted tangible progress with regard to the rate of connectivity between the different authorities and public administrations. With the creation of a national data center, the Council of Ministers approved an agreement by direct negotiation between the High Commission for Digitalization and the Chinese company Huawei due to the urgent nature of the operation. Concerning the monitoring of the implementation of a complementary development programs in Khanshla, Tisimsil, Jilfa and Tinduf provinces, the President of the Republic underlined the need to strengthen national cohesion, which is at the heart of its priorities through a strategy based on balanced development, which compensates for the deficit previously recorded in certain regions to the detriment of others. The President of the Republic ordered that the greatest importance to be given to the completion of development programs for these provinces. Concerning Jilfa province, the President of the Republic insisted on the need for urban development and the adaptation of the capital of the province to urban expansion of a modern character. The head of state also welcomed the efforts of the Ministry of Health to equip the health structure in Tinduf province as he committed to during his last visit to this province. The president also ordered to increase the quota of rural housing units in Tisimsilt province from 3,000 to 15,000 units. Regarding the implementation of the electrical connection program for farms, industrial zones and activity zones, the president of the republic welcomed the efforts made by Sonar Gas Company to achieve complementarity in development and overcome obstacles that were spoiling the lives of citizens. The president of the republic instructed the minister of energy to convey his personal thanks and congratulations, as well as the appreciation of the Council of Ministers to the workers, managers and executive of Sonar Gas Company for the accomplished excellent work. The President of the Republic insisted on the need to make further progress in the electrical connection of industrial and activity zones, being the infrastructures which support the national economy and one of the engines of its development. The President of the Republic reaffirmed the determination of the state to continue the development process which is at the heart of its concerns because of its direct positive impact on the lives of citizens. Concerning the preparation for the 2024 Olympic Games, the head of state wanted to reassure the national sporting elite in all its disciplines that the state was fully prepared to mobilize all means for their participation in the 2024 Olympic Games, including support for training courses abroad. 
the president affirmed that no distinction will be made between support for athletes participating in the Olympic Games and those participated in the Paralympic Games. Regarding the progress report on the general receding of agriculture, the president asked the government to give all the importance to this operation because it is a basic mechanism making it possible to know national capacities and identify the needs to make the right decisions based on precise scientific data. Finally, the President of the Republic instructed the Minister of Trade and Export Promotion to convey his thanks to the representatives of the traders and all partners, actors and economic operators for their efforts and commitment to the stability of the market. Pursuant to the instructions of the President of the Republic and in solidarity with the brotherly Palestinian people, humanitarian aid had been dispatched from Bufarik Military Airport in Blida to Al Arish Airport in Egypt in order to transport it to Gaza via Rafah border crossing. We're talking about 150 tons of vital food supplies. This operation has been carried out under the supervision of the Algerian Red Crescent with the support of the PNA, providing a lift of two aircraft a day. It is actually a gesture of support towards Palestinian people suffering from a genocide and famine in Gaza. Indeed, famine is roaming the streets in Gaza, and according to the Commissioner General of the UN Agency for Palestine Refugees, Philip Lazirini stated that the Zionist forces blocked all their food convoys from entering northern Gaza. It comes at a time when raids have been intensified and amid the month of Ramadan. Rafiq Hamid Ash. Under the pretext of searching of members of Hamas, the Zionist army continues to defy all international laws committing crimes against humanity, killing civilians, whether they are in the street, at home, or even in hospitals looking for treatment. During the last 10 hours, no less than 10 civilians were killed and 23 wounded after the Zionist attack against the distribution point of the only humanitarian aid that could reach the starving Palestinian in the south part of Gaza City. Also, and according to the Palestinian Red Crescent, the Zionist armed forces besieged two more Gaza hospitals on Sunday, pining down medical teams under heavy gunfire at Gaza main Al-Shifa hospital. An attack during which the PRC had lost one of its staff on duty. For its part, the health ministry in Gaza said dozens of patients and medical safers had been detained by the Zionist forces at Al-Shifa hospital which has been under the occupier control for more than a week. The international community has been calling for a ceasefire, but there is no end in sight. The World Health Organization and the UNRWA insist on the fact that more efforts should be deployed to deliver food and that it should be even an immediate acceleration of food deliveries. And for the latest updates and information on the genocide in Gaza, we have with us live the Palestinian journalist Usama Nazal, who's joining us from Jenin in the northern part of the occupied West Bank. Mr. Nazal, thank you for accepting our invitation tonight. The situation there is a total chaos. We're talking about besieged hospitals that are constantly being targeted. What's going on there, what's going on there exactly? The situation in the Gaza is really catastrophic. And it can be portrayed as hell on earth because of the Zionist regime crimes against the Palestinians in Gaza. The Zionist regime forces are storming the hospitals in Gaza City, mainly Ashifa Hospital in Gaza City, storming into the different sections of the hospital, killing dozens of people inside and around the hospital, forcing the patients out and forcing them to go to the unknown detaining and interrogating many Palestinians inside the hospital, though they are all medics and civilians. As we know that thousands of Palestinian civilians were forced out of their houses and their neighborhoods into the hospitals looking for a safe shelter. But it turned out that these hospitals are unsafe. The situation in Ashifa Hospital can't be imagined also in Khan Yunis, the southern part of the Gaza Sea, Al Amal and Nasser hospitals were stormed and assaulted by the Israeli occupation and the Zionist regime forces. The mission of the Zionist regime today is clear, destroying the health sector, forcing all the Palestinians out of Gaza and 
putting an end to the existence of the indigenous people of the Gaza Strip, who are the people of Palestine. The Zionist regime is imposing a tightened blockade, mainly on the northern part of the Gaza Strip, leading to a real starvation or even to a famine, as many people are suffering hunger. And you know that we have the holy fasting month of Ramadan these days, and the people in northern Gaza don't have food to break their fast. Even water, they don't have water to drink. Sir, a ceasefire is more than needed at this moment. Talks are being carried out but fail each time to bring peace and stability in Gaza. The UN Secretary General is still calling for ceasefire. How do you see this situation? Their credibility. People in the Gaza Strip say we don't want to communicate the Red Cross because of the many calls and of the many appeals. For 170 days, and all that the Palestinians here from these organizations and the international community, if there is an international community, is just words, empty words, by hollow organizations and by hollow men. Because when the Zionist brutes commit such a crimes, finding no one on this planet to stop them, I think this planet has only hollow men, hollow organizations who give hollow and empty words. You know, Gaza fought the humanity at first, and only humanity failed that test. Because when people around the world are watching on the TV screens and on the social media outlets, children being mutilated, children being executed. Just yesterday, the Israeli tanks ran over Palestinians evacuating a Shifa hospital in Gaza, mutilating their bodies under the tracks of the, of the, of the tanks. Some women who evacuated the hospital said to different news outlets that the Israeli soldiers raped Palestinian women and killed Palestinian women inside the hospital. And all the world, without any exception, all the world is watching and hearing and witnessing such crimes. And in the best scenario, they say that there should be a ceasefire. But they don't take any action to force the Zionist regime to end its genocidal campaign against the indigenous people of Palestine. Um. That was Osama Nazawa who joined us from Jindin in the northern part of the occupied West Bank. Thank you for joining us. Another student gathering in solidarity with Palestine was savagely repressed in Morocco by the Maxim forces. Several cities witnessed protests organized by Moroccans denouncing the shameful normalization with the Zionist entity. Esil Hamdi reports. In Morocco, the popular rot continues. Another student protest took place this Saturday in the Science Faculty of Tetuan University in solidarity with the Palestinian people and against the normalization with the Zionist entity, a protest that has been violently repressed by a brutal military incursion aiming to turn to silence the voice of justice and solidarity. <laughs> Despite this repression, thousands of people keep protesting to make their voices heard in several Moroccan cities, including Rabat, Casablanca and Marrakesh, demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, the end of the massacres against the Palestinian people and the breakdown of the relations between the Mahzen and the Zionist occupier. <laughs> On their signs, we can read the people wants to free Palestine. Gaza is a symbol of pride and not normalization with the Zionist entity. To Senegal, where the Algerian culinary art has made its way thanks to an Algerian lady living there who opened a shop selling Algerian products and traditional dishes, impressing not only Algerians but also North Africans, Westerns, and the local populations as well. Najah Tayyar has the details. 
Boucherie La Tradition, a big shop in Senegal. It offers a wide range of Algerian culinary products and Algerian traditional food. The shop is mostly frequented by Algerians nostalgic for their homeland, just like its owner Medina, where they can find local Algerian products such as bread, couscous and traditional cakes in a very Algerian market ambience. <laughs> I started by the bread and matloh. It was very demanded. Later on, I introduced the couscous and everyone appreciated it, especially that we have a very savory spices. The shop makes the Algerian visitors very happy since it has the Algerian atmosphere and particularly in Ramadan. We prepare shorba and harira and several traditional dishes. <laughs> In Dakar, we find only foreign products, and we prefer Algerian products. In this shop, we can find merguez, rishta, brik, burek, and many other traditional food. As you enter the shop, sweet smells tickle your nostrils, making you feel as if you're in Algeria though you are actually in Dakar. When you come here, you feel as if you're in Algeria, considering the products, the dishes served, or the welcome. The ambience here is so Algerian. People are so happy finding Algerian products. They even demand the couscous in the Eid day. We gather Algerians and celebrate it as a family. Medina has succeeded in bringing together Algerians living in Dakar, as well as introducing the Algerian cuisine to different world's nationalities besides the locals living in Senegal. Uh, that was it for today's news. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.